Hello, everybody in the chess world. So today, for the first time, I'm going to talk about the Benko Gambit. And it'll be from white side uh, point of view. You know, I played with black, some versions of it. But the interesting thing for me is to see you know, what to play with, with white. So talking about the this Gambit itself, the opening itself, the first thing that I can tell you is that in my experience, for example, I normally score very well against it, but still every time that I see, you know, this B5 move on, on the board, it's a little bit of an unpleasant feeling. Uh, definitely not my favorite open interface, even though I, I get uh, good results. Because, you know, the spirit uh, leads to <laughs> sort of game that is uh, more fun for black, you know. Main lines with, I, I guess it, it feels much better that that initiative on, on the queen side than that extra pawn for for white. Of course, you know, it's just a normal opening. But a um, lot of tries that have I have uh, used, you know, for example, like yeah, accepting the gambit. I remember a long time ago, a lot of years playing this uh, side set variation. But then I discovered that. In my main line was this knight bd7 was a refutation at least of every possible tactical shot, you know, in the opening and you know stuff like this. Black is usually okay. Um, what else? I've played. Uh, I mean, even a4. This this counter <laughs> gambit is interesting. So the idea is it, it has some similarities to the move that I'm going to show for this video. Uh, after they take on c4, you know, we start with knight on c3, we always have to be able to build up a e4 and at least keep a pawn on d5. And, yeah, we do that. Uh, bishop takes c4. This is all fine. May maybe in here, I'm kinda in the diff a little difference between this and what I'm going to show you is this big hole, you know, on b4. Um, maybe black uh, will try knight on a6, knight on b4. Maybe they won't, but it is a little difference. Uh, it's uh, our queen side's a little bit more vulnerable because of the fact that we've moved this a a, a pawn. Still fine, but um, the move that I'm going to show you is this queen on c2. This was just a uh, I think it yeah a long time ago, maybe eight years ago. So I asked one of my trainers. He was an IM. Like okay, you know, I show him show him basically what I just showed you, and he thought for a while and he told me, well, what about queen on c2? Maybe have you tried that? And no. I have not. Um, it's similar in a, to this A4 move. We are kind of pretending that we're not paying attention to what Black is doing. Like saying, hey, you, you want to take on C4? It's fine. I'll, I'll just develop uh, my pieces. Of course, Queen on C2 is aiming for the C4 and E4 squares that are you know, key on this line. Um, I think in general we'll say that it's um, it's a move. You know, it's, it's, it's not super aggressive. Uh, but I, I tried it in a lot of tournament games, and I, and I like it. So, you know, our model game is going to be a victory by, by Mamedyarov. This is always logical, have a model game, uh, a victory by a super GM. Um, but for example, you know, after B takes before, I mean, the, there exists even the move on uh, B4. It looks a little bit anti-positional, you know, white can will react with the move a3 at will at, at, at any point. It's not that before it's a bad move, it's just that it's yeah, maybe someday, it looks like they're closing up, you know, the flag where they initiated their actions for b5. And it's not, not a bad move, but eh, definitely not, not the most testing one. b takes e4 and, of course, one of the ideas of this uh, queen on c2 is start you know, with the normal e4. And that way, of course, we just want to recapture on c4 with our bishop, not, not with our queen. Um, I mean, our main game, we'll see black trying e6, just hit him for, for the center immediately, which is one of the good moves. I guess more natural and what, you know, you will see more often if, if, you, if you, what I see more often is a normal Benko or Benoni move, g6, you know, after which we do recapture the pawn on c4. Um, First of all, I want to show you an example in which um, things did not go so well for, for white. Um, this is Robert Kempinski playing with the with the white pieces in, in this line. Uh, he's uh, against this bulk, is his name, 25-40. So we see the normal, again, Benko, Gambit, or Benonimus, you know, just G6, Bishop and G7, and Castle for, for black. 
And Kempinski played it a normal and well. You know, we've seen normal development. Um, here there are, there is more than one plan, but the one that Black is is fine. One it's I think it's a good move. You know, just changing those bishops, and I guess um, Kempinski was a little bit impatient uh, because in here h3 is correct since it's preventing the possible idea of let us say you know an ig4 and 85 might be an idea black play knight on d7 and then they're going through the other side queen on e2 is correct but then after knight on c7 well maybe here again there was some kempinski lost his patience his patience he played the e5 it's not a bad move but this will kind of eventually lead to massive exchanges and allowing black to equalize um this is the way I wanted to show you this game because um, it's better tra trying to be patient. Um, I mean, rook f1 is a move. Even queen d2 is a move. Just hitting on, on h7. Okay, king on h7 is going to come, but still, we're not on the our queen is not on the file anymore. I mean, I think I think that even a move like this, again, you know, like king on h7, we want the tempo. We're not in here. That already makes. You know, the e5 pawn break are stronger. Of course, we might. I would like to include rook f1, try to be better prepared. So, if well, in this position, again, he played e5, but first of all, we, we saw this massive exchange, exchanges on, on the center, and queen d6 is a really precise move. And as I said, you know, we saw but uh, massive exchanges, and yeah, in spite of the pawn up for Kempinski, this. Invasion on the second rank was, well, yeah, inevitably uh, leave uh, Black super comfortable. Yeah, uh, that's it. There's a draw. So Kempinski went back with, with his rook and everything to be able to still be up on Apple on the queen side, but yeah, there's nothing to do. And here it was a draw, of course. I mean, Black is just going to play this. <laughs> It'll be a draw. So, um... I like the way Kempinski played uh, up to this point. Uh, I think he just rushed uh, the e5. Um, I think that you should, it's a good thing to to root. A good reminder, you know. So going for finally for our main line, you know, my main feature game. Well, this was my my Mamajero against Nwen, and Nwen played e6, which I think again this is the second move that you'll see more often. It's the bravest move for for Black. Just immediately hit him on the center. Knight c3 came. Bishop on e7. And this is another detail of the difference with, with e6, you know. Uh, Black is not forced to play the standard g6 or, or and bishop, followed by bishop on g7. They went for this instead. So bishop takes, castles. This is a funny move. Um, I'm almost 100% sure that the, the engines do not like this Mamediarov's move, knight g on e2. I think they, they just want to play knight on f3. Like, they see a, a considerable difference. Um, I knew this, and I still play, always play knight g2 in, in this moment, with the idea simply of knight on g3, you know? Um, it's, it's It looks so natural. I played this exact position uh, not long ago on the internet, uh, d6. And I mean, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this, and some lines, if this knight goes away, I might look, look, be looking at this. I mean, I have to 100% agree with Mediaro on, on this one. So, okay, in this particular game, we saw knight, knight b6. And yeah, and here again, another, um, I, I think it's a useful moment, you know, like an instructive moment, because instinctively, a lot of us will just put the, the bishop back instinctively, because I will want to keep the pair of bishops while giving it up for, for the night. But yeah, if we're going to defend that, let us do it with the big bone. So yeah, if they take, they will have the pair of bishops, you know, uh, we want, uh, they will reinforce this, you know, just to reinforce the center, will be totally fine, you know, we'll have the stronger b5 square and this is in b3 is all obviously a good move in the game we saw rook on e8 this is a good move by black rook on e1 bishop on f8 and after bishop on f4 well i think we can 
easily appreciate uh, the advantage that Mamed Jarov uh, got uh, got on this game. Uh, Black is not quite on, in time to contend uh, the E file. I mean, they're lacking development. The bishop is still on C8, so there is a price for that. Uh, and, you know, in spite of the fact that they're pretty solid. So that's why N1 gave up the the file to then play Rook on B8. I think that that's probably one of the, the first dubious moves. Uh, we'll see him pay a high price of having the Rook on the same diagonal as um, Mamijarov's Bishop. H3. Knight takes E4, B takes E4. Queen D7. Knight C4. Black exchange knights, and here it came like, well, we, we see the decisive mistake. Uh, rook b6 was the only move, uh, putting the rook, you know, away from, uh, out of that diagonal, you know, just controlled by our Mamedero's bishop. And by the way, why not, uh, you know, adding another a defense for the d6 pawn? So not everybody in Black's camp has to be, you know, looking at uh, that little one, but okay, uh, Black obviously missed uh, the Babajero's threat. They, they played Bishop on E6, is this is a mistake. Simply Knight takes on C5 is more than enough. And after, well, Knight takes, Bishop takes, C5 came. And after Queen on A5 hitting the Rook, simply Rook on D1, Babajero is 100% uh, winning in this position. So I think, um, once again, I don't think that the queen c2 is, is anything, it's like the most testing move. But uh, it is a disencouragement for black, you know, from you know, refrain from letting black play what he wants with what they normally want with a Benko Gambit. And there are some good ideas. You know, I really like this knight g2, knight g3. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I have played it, that on, on the internet. You can see some of the, those games. Maybe, maybe I'll leave the, the links. And it turned out to be easy for, for white. It's so positions that are really cool. Um, and just on, on the normal d6 line, well, I, I like to have in mind this uh, you know, Robert Kempinski's uh, example where he played everything correct, but maybe on the key moment, well, he, he played e5 a little bit early. We should try to prepare it as best as possible. And that'll, you know, that'll give us a better results, clearly. So thanks a lot for watching. Uh, remember, as usual, uh, to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh,